I'm Adam Collins and this is Crick Buzz Centre Stage at the Oval here in London ahead of the fifth and final Ashes Test match which kicks off on Thursday. Today we heard from the coaches Justin Langer and Trevor Bayliss. From Australia's perspective they're still on a high. They celebrated hard on Sunday night when winning the fourth match at Manchester and rightly so. They came here to retain the Ashes for the first time in 18 years on English soil and indeed they've done that. But talking to Langer today there's a broader perspective being given here too. They know the World Test championship has begun there really is no such thing as a dead rubber anymore and they want to win here they don't want to draw the series to all and retain the ashes they want to get back on that plane and say they've won here for the first time in 18 years it may sound like semantics but it means an awful lot for this Australian side they made that abundantly clear today in terms of the selection table they do have a bit of a trick in terms of how they're going to get the best fast bowling group together perhaps if the fifth test was live in terms of the ashes series you would definitely see Patrick Cummins but he's played four tests on the bounce. Josh Hazelwood, three in a row. They're mindful of making sure that the bodies of these fast bowlers aren't just right for this series, but they can extend their careers by not having them pick up injuries at the back of series, as we so often see. In terms of the batting lineup, there's been a lot of talk around David Warner's position in the side. Of course, he's had six scores under 10 in the series. He bagged a pair at Manchester. Indeed, three ducks on the trot going back to the second innings at Leeds. But from Justin Langer's perspective, Warner's good to go. And indeed, he was facing balls all morning from none other than Stephen Smith. No, he'll be fine. Steve Smith was throwing balls to him. He's usually hitting balls and he didn't want to hit any today. So. He just loves being involved, that's why he was hit throwing balls. He threw it to a lot of the guys. Um, yeah, Davey hasn't had a great series. I mean, there's no, no secrets about that. But he's also a world-class player, and he's, I've said throughout the whole series, if Davey has one good, good innings, it'll help us win the Ashes. So, you know, he's, uh, he's probably hasn't been through this lean run before. So it's going to be a good test of his character, and, and uh, we know what a great player he is. He's had a huge World Cup. He had a huge IPL, albeit with a white ball, but he's a, he's a world-class player. He's a match winner. He's, a, he's been brilliant around the group since he's been back. The energy you saw him bowl like Steve throwing, he bowled for about 45 minutes to help his mates. mates. He's been great. He's been, good. he's been good for the crowds. He's been good amongst the group. Um, hasn't got the runs he wants at the moment, but geez, I'm looking forward to seeing it when he doesn't, and there's no better place in the world to bat than the Oval, so I'm looking forward to seeing him go well this week. As for the home side, they may have seeded the Ashes, but they're going to go in with the same squad of 13. We're not quite sure how they'll land, but it's almost certain that Jason Roy will play again on what is his home ground for Surrey. Trevor Bayliss discussed the fact that Roy's got more work to do, but he's heading vaguely in the right direction. They want more from him in this final test match to guarantee that he'll go on those winter tours now that he's dropped down to number four. But a lot of the conversation with Bayliss was about the fact that it's his last test match in charge of this England side. He took over four years ago. He won the Ashes here immediately. Of course, he won the World Cup over at Lords back in July. So a record that on the most part they're very happy with. They had so much energy channeled towards winning that 50 over World Cup and that's mission accomplished as far as Bayless is concerned. But talking to us today, he was taking the broader lens about what next needs to happen for English cricket. Um, look, he certainly, he's, he's certainly got still got to prove something, um, you know, prove it to not just himself, but um, you know, everyone that he that he is capable of playing at this level. You know, he's a, he is a talent, um, that's for sure. But I mean, obviously, there's there's uh, some challenges for him in the Test game, um, and certainly some challenges for him against this bowling attack. Um, look, it's, on, on one hand, you know, uh, sad to be leaving the job. It's been a you know, it's been a fantastic. Um, you know, personally, it's been fantastic environment to work in. Um, everyone's made me feel at home. Um, you know, from a, from a cricket sense, you know, we've we've had a lot of good performances. Um, you know, obviously the cherry on top with the, the World Cup uh, win. So, but look, I am looking forward to getting home. But I think it's you know I've never stayed anywhere more than four or five years, and you know it's time for time for someone else to come in and you know a new voice for the for the team. As Bayless concluded, he feels as though he's going at the right time. The right time for a new voice can take over this England side and can set them on a path which might make them competitive in the World Test Championship. It's not just the Ashes cycle that matters as it always has between Australia and England. Now with the World Test Championship in the mixer, that does reframe the mind and does focus the attention on that trophy as well. Tomorrow we'll hear from the captains, Tim Payne and Joe Root. This is Crick Bus Centre Stage with Adam Collins. I'll talk to you then.